You know, I often hear folks talking about what the most important aspect is to a great landscape photo. And although I really struggle with identifying, I guess, a singular answer to that question or, or on that topic, I do, however, focus on three key elements within my own photography, with the first element being an intriguing composition, great light, and then dynamic or, or eye-catching color. Now, from a post-processing perspective, there's really only so much you can do to alter your compositions after the fact, outside of utilizing the crop tool. As far as light is concerned, you can definitely enhance light by utilizing various different dodging and burning techniques, but when it comes to bringing out or improving the colors contained within your photographs, the sky is really the limit. There's a multitude of different ways that you can enhance color within your photographs. So I guess needless to say, the tools that we have at our disposal to enhance color within our images, that is of the utmost importance to myself. And it's really the main reason why I am so keen on the new Lightroom 10 update that was just released. I actually haven't been this excited about a Lightroom update since the introduction of range masks, I guess maybe two or three years ago now. And in this video, I want to walk you through these new color editing tools inside of Lightroom that are now available to us and what it means for enhancing color in your landscape photos. So to jump right into it, this is an image from my recent trip to, uh, to Acadia, which is all about the color. You know, this is a, it's a fall photograph and gr great fall images. It's all about the color. And I felt that this was a perfect image to do a, a video on, uh, on color. But before we do jump right into it, I do want to mention something really quickly that it doesn't have anything to do with color just yet but it is an, a, an update available in Lightroom 10 that I think is absolutely tremendous. I don't know about you, but I personally, it really bugged me in previous versions of Lightroom how you zoom in and zoom out of a photograph. I was constantly zooming in too far or zooming out too far, and it's just, it, I felt it to be very cumbersome. And as far, and, and I know zooming in and zooming out, it seems very basic and it seems like a very mundane task, but I find it to be very, very important for editing images. I try not to do a whole lot of pixel peeping, but I still find myself zooming in and zooming out of photographs rather frequently throughout an entire workflow of a particular image. So Lightroom completely revamped the way that you can do this, and I think it's absolutely tremendous. So there's two different ways you can do this. Here's my, my cursor right here. If you hold down the shift key, you'll notice that your cursor turns into this magnifying glass with a left and right arrow. If you just slide to the right, you zoom in. If you slide to the left, you zoom out. You can go in and out, in and out. It's just absolutely fantastic. It's very responsive as well. But the the best way, in my personal opinion, is like this. I'm on a Mac, so if you hold down the Command key, you'll notice that your icon changes again, and you can kind of drag this square out, and it'll zoom in. You can make the square really large. You can make it extremely small. Let me find a good area, like right through here. So I think that that is absolutely fantastic. It seems like a very basic task, but it's super, super important in my personal opinion, and I think that type of zooming in and zooming out functionality is a huge um, upgrade to, uh, to Lightroom 10. So uh, so back to, let me get back on track here. So as far as color grading is concerned, so you might notice if you've already updated to Lightroom 10 that you no longer have a section here titled split toning, but you do, however, have a new section titled color grading. And what color grading is, is it breaks it down into three areas. You have a mid-tone area here, you have shadows down here, and then you have highlights down here. And, mid, and, and color grading is similar to the way that split toning used to operate, except this is, gives you much more control. It's a much more robust uh, approach to split toning. Split toning was a little, I guess, elementary or a little bit more basic, and this is much more, um, gives you, I, I guess, much greater control. So what it is, is it gives you the ability to tint certain tones within your photograph cer certain colors. So you can turn, tint the shadows of your image a certain color, you can tint the highlights of your image a certain color, and you can tint the mid-tones of your image a certain color. You can only do one, you don't have to do all three, maybe you only want to tint the highlights of a photograph, or maybe you only want to tint the shadows. You have that ability now. And why, why this is so great is because it enables you to get good tonal separation. You might have heard the term tonal separation, um, when it, when people talk about editing images and tonal separation is generally a good thing. It get, you, a lot of times you can, you'll see people tint the shadows of a photograph, a cool color, or tint the highlights of uh, an image, a warm color. And that's good tonal separation. Normally cool colors and warm colors are complementary colors on the color wheel. And those image, that, that kind of color scheme or color palette generally works well. So tonal separation is, is a good thing within a photograph. And this new color grading tool enables you to do just that. So you have multiple different views. If you click this little icon here, this will show you all three color wheels. 
If you click the blue one, you'll get shadow, or the blue one. If you click this one, you will get shadows. If you select this one, you will get midtones. And if you select this one, you will get highlights. This one on the far right is global, which I don't anticipate myself using that very often. That is gonna to impact all tones in your image the same way. So I'll probably just stick to the shadow midtones and highlights for my images. But if we start at shadows, and if you just drag this wheel out, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, you have the hue saturation values. And you'll notice that they're all changing all different numbers as I move this around. If I just leave it right here, and we grab this right here, this is gonna change the hue. So the circle on the outside of the ball is going to change the hue. And if we settle on this hue right here, this right here, if we slide this back and forth on this line, is going to change the actual saturation level of that particular hue. Now, if you select this right here, it'll pull up those same color palettes. If you use split toning before in Lightroom, those are the same exact color palettes that Lightroom provided you by default, which are great. Something I like to do is grab this little eye picker and drag it onto an area of shadows that I want to replicate. So a, an area that has a naturally occurring color. So something about right there looks good. Let me close this down. You don't notice that it selected that color right there. And if we take this saturation slider and just kind of slide this back and forth, we can pick how saturated we want that color blue to be. And what's really cool is it has this eye icon right here. You can toggle this on and off. And what is fantastic, anyone who's ever watched any of my editing videos knows that I love a good on and off button. And what's so cool is in split toning before, you only had the ability to, to turn the entire section on and off to see the impact it had on a particular image but with this new color grading feature, you can turn off each section independently so you can see exactly what the shadow update is doing. You can see exactly what the highlight and the midtone update is doing independent on your particular image, which I think is fantastic. So by selecting that, you can see exactly what we did. It's very subtle, but it definitely kind of cooled down those shadows a little bit more than they already were. And probably perhaps the, the best addition to this color grading section is this luminance slider right here, which actually gives you the ability to increase the lightness value of the color that you're tinting the shadow. So you can make those tones much brighter. You can make them a little bit darker as well. And since they are shadows that I am tinting, I'm going to kind of darken it down just a little bit right there. We can turn this on and off. Now I'm gonna come up here to highlights. And since I tinted the, the shadows a cool color, I'm gonna flip over to the other side of the color wheel, a complementary color and pick kind of a, a warmer color for the highlights. So I'm gonna kind of drag this over here to something around this area here. Grab this circle to adjust the hue. So I think that looks good. I'm gonna kind of bring the saturation of that color up quite a bit just so it's a little bit easier to see at home. And we will bring the luminance or the lightness value of the highlights up a touch as well. And if we toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done right there, which is a big difference already. Might even bring the luminance up just a little bit more. And something that I failed to mention in the very beginning is this. So in the basic section, there is a just a real quick edit done to the white balance and the areas right through here and a little bit of a positive texture, a little bit of negative clarity, but nothing has been done to the vibrance or the saturation of this particular image. All the color, spe color specific editing has been left at zero prior to doing the color grading. And if we toggle the edit on and off, let me open up the color grading section. This is where we started. And this is where we are at right now. So before and after, before and after, and all we have done is use the, the new color grading tool inside of Lightroom. Nothing has been done anywhere else to enhance the colors. We can come over here to midtones. We can do the same thing if we wanna warm up the midtones just a little bit, maybe add something a little bit more yellow. About right there looks good. Toggle that on and off, you can see what that has done. So we're just tinting the midtones, just a slightly warmer color bring up the brightness value of that just a little bit. And this balance slider right here is basically telling Lightroom what do you wanna emphasize more? Do you wanna emphasize the shadows a little bit more? Do you wanna emphasize the highlights a little bit more? So if I slide this all the way to the left, you'll notice that the color of the image became very cool because we're telling Lightroom we wanna emphasize the shadows more. If we slide it all the way to the right, it's getting very warm because we're telling Lightroom we wanna emphasize the highlights more. And if we go back here, you can actually see the adjustment we made to the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights, you can toggle each on and off independently just to see how each is impacting your overall photograph. And if we just come up here and hit the actual backslash key, this is before, and this is after, before and after. And I can't stress enough that we have not done anything 
to the Vibrant slider, the Saturation slider, nothing to the HSL section, nothing to the Calibration section either. All of that was done in the new color grading tool. And of course, you still have the same area right through here, hue, saturation, and luminance of the individual color channels. So if you wanted to kind of boost the reds, the oranges, and the yellows, maybe we want to shift the yellow channel more towards orange, maybe shift the orange channel more towards red. We can do that as well. We can kind of brighten up the oranges a touch. We could brighten up the reds a little bit as well. There's a lot you can do there. And it still has the same calibration section as well. So there's so much you can do now between HSL section, between the calibration section, and between the new color grading section as well. There is a lot of different ways that you can now enhance color inside of Lightroom. And once again, here is the overall edit. This is before and after, before and after. And that made an absolutely tremendous difference. And the majority of that color work was done utilizing the new color wheels uh, in the uh, color grading section. So a very, very welcome update. If you haven't updated your Lightroom yet and you're using Lightroom Classic, definitely check out Lightroom 10. It's a free update and it's definitely uh, something that I'm really looking forward to uh, testing out on my landscape photos moving forward as well. So I do hope this week's video was some helpful information that you can start to uh, apply to your landscape photos moving forward. I think that these new color wheels are, are a lot of fun to play around with. And it's definitely a way that you can get really creative with your, your images and maybe kind of work towards your own creative style as well. So if you do have any questions, please leave those in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.